All right, hey, it's Rob, and uh, it's a momentous occasion in the life of my 2022 Ford Maverick EcoBoost front-wheel drive in iconic silver because I've hit the 30,000-mile mark on this truck. I have pretty much documented every second of the life of this vehicle on my YouTube channel, the first time I've ever done that. So we're just going to take it out on the road. I'm going to tell you about the quirks and features, give it a Doug score. No, okay, not really, but uh, we'll take it out and I'll just talk about uh, what's been going on lately with the Mav and what it's been like to live with it for uh, approaching three years because I got it in January of 2022, pretty much right after they had become available and I could find them on a dealer lot. NBC Wednesday Mystery Movie will not be seen tonight, but will return in two weeks at its regular time. special program in living color on NBC. Hey, it's Rob, and uh, I got all dressed up today for this video. Just rolled out of bed pretty much, and uh, I'm going to tell you everything I know about my new 2022 Ford Maverick XLT EcoBoost uh, 2.0 in Iconic Silver. Hey, it's Rob, and uh, I'm at my beach house on St. Simons Island in Georgia, and this is my almost 4,000 mile update on my 2022 Ford Maverick. All right, hey, it's Rob, and I thought I would do my nearly 8,000 mile update on my 2022 Ford Maverick XLT EcoBoost in Iconic Silver. All right, hey, it's Rob, and I am celebrating 9,000 miles of happy motoring in my 2022 Ford Maverick XLT EcoBoost 2.0. Hey, it's Rob, and I'm doing my 11,296 mile update on my 2022 Ford Maverick. All right. Hey, it's Rob, and uh, it's that time again. This is my 13,287 mile update for my 2022 Ford Maverick. Beautiful crisp fall morning in Atlanta and I thought probably a good time to do my two-year Maverick update. Yes indeed. All right, hope you enjoyed that little blast from the past and now let's talk about the present day and what's happening with my 2022 Ford Maverick. As I mentioned this is the EcoBoost, just the front-wheel drive version. This was what was available in the beginning of 2022 when I started looking for the vehicle. I was not an early adopter for whatever reason, even though I'm a you know, total fanboy when it comes to cars and especially you know, a fan of Ford vehicles. I've owned many of them. I currently, I don't know if you saw in the video in the background, own a 1983 Ford Mustang GLX convertible. So, but I've had many Fords over the years, couple F-150s, etc. So this was right up my alley, and uh, I had been driving a Volvo V60 wagon, and let me tell you, that is a nice car, and I certainly miss it. And I kind of just made this decision on a whim when I happened to come across a couple Mavericks at a dealership without really thinking about it too much. I certainly miss that great stereo, those great seats. They are, of course, well-built, solid cars, and it was a wagon. It served my needs, but not as well as a pickup truck, which is what I really needed. I haul around a bunch of equipment. I work in the film business as a sound engineer, so I have carts and stands and things that I really don't want in the same vehicle compartment as me, because if there's an accident, the thing could go right through my head or whatever. So uh, it's nice to have a separate box where all that stuff is isolated from my own body and uh, just obviously more convenient to haul stuff around in a pickup truck than even in a wagon, although the wagon, you know, had ample space for what I needed for the most part. Of course, once you get a truck, everyone finds stuff for you to do, and my wife has found all these, you know, gardening activities, and we've been hauling around bags of dirt and plants and, you know, rocks, for, you know, for the garden and everything else you can imagine. Once you get a truck, people tend to find uses for your truck, but, uh, Anyway, so let's talk about the Maverick. Uh, like I said, I just happened to join a Facebook group for a dealership. They said, hey, we've got four of them in right now. And the things I was looking for were uh, 
Copilot 360. I wanted to get an AC outlet. I thought I'd get some use out of that. The full size spare and the sliding back window, which I've honestly never used, but I thought that was a useful thing to have. I've had Ford F-150s, like I said in the past, with the sliding rear window. Of course, my F-150 was not a uh, super crew or whatever you want to call this with the back seat. So I was just able to reach back and slide it open. I guess I wasn't really thinking because of course, there's no way I can reach back and slide my window open now. So it just never gets open. Anyway, those are the features I was most interested in. They had, like I said, four of them. I did not want a white truck. I did not want a black truck. Uh, and this kind of was of the four vehicles that had arrived pretty much that day. First of all, it was one of the ones that wasn't spoken for because there were already like two people milling about looking at Mavericks when I got there. But hey, this was silver, so it wasn't white, wasn't black, and it had the features I wanted, so I just went for it. Of course, in January 22, I had to overpay $2,500 for the privilege of getting the Maverick. Of course, it sucks to have these dealer add-ons. You're just throwing money into a hole. But I also got a few thousand dollars more in my trade-in because remember in 2022 trade-ins were really high. So I don't know, I got six or seven grand more or something or other than I would have previously in the past few months for that Volvo. So it's certainly, you know, not only evened out, I still came out ahead of the deal, you know, compared to if I would have gotten rid of the Volvo, whatever, the summer before or something like that. So... <clears throat> I figured I could justify it that way. Um, anyway, I did want the Maverick. I got the Maverick. I paid the price, but uh, I know a lot of people pay a lot worse. And even recently, like in the last, I don't know, six months or something or other, I looked at hybrids and they still were marking them up. Like, come on, you know, these vehicles have been out for three years. When I first bought this uh, Maverick and started making videos, I got a lot of views on the videos because they're just was a lot of pent-up demand for this vehicle. They were not available, you couldn't find them. A lot of people had never even seen them, didn't know about them. So uh, for like the first year, I rarely saw any Mavericks. I'm in Atlanta and uh, even in a big city like Atlanta, like I only ran on, you know, into maybe, I don't know, three or four of them, uh, you know, out on the road or, you know, seeing them park somewhere maybe in the first six months, something like that. So very few of them. And then of course we started to see a bit more <clears throat> Mavericks on the road, a few more Mavericks on the road, but um, they're never gonna make them in any volume, at least compared to what the demand is. It's just not a profit center for Ford in general. They don't make money on the small trucks. That's why, you know, Chevy, uh, you know, Dodge, whoever, have still not made a smaller size pickup even to this day, although they've talked about it and they said Toyota was going to come out with one. And of course, Hyundai kind of has one, but it's not really the same thing as this. It really is more like a car with a box. And this is to some degree that, but this is more truck-like. Uh, these were so rare when I bought them that I had a couple people say, is that a Rivian? Because they're just aren't any other unibody trucks out there maybe especially in silver which is a color you often see the rivians in and uh, boy don't i wish because man rivians are nice but uh, that's neither here nor there anyway six minutes into the video we talked about the history let's talk about how the truck is doing and has done now of course i've had a few recalls on the truck the big one i think was the side curtain airbag the headliner had to come out or whatever I think for that one, uh, the dealer had a concierge service, which was nice. They just picked up my truck, took it, brought it back. I didn't have to deal with it, didn't have to sit at the dealership. And uh, the funny story with that was the kid, and I'm going to say kid, who picked it up. And yeah, I'm approaching 60 years old, so a lot of people look like a kid to me. But uh, this kid was really young, you know, maybe 20 years old. And it looked like he possibly didn't even own his own vehicle yet. So uh, he picked up my truck. I have, uh, you know, the Ford Pass app or whatever, and I'm able to track it. And I saw that he was sitting at McDonald's for about a half hour in the morning before the truck actually made it to the dealership. Honestly, I wouldn't have cared if he had just gone through the drive-through and picked up something on his way. 
But he literally sat in the parking lot of McDonald's. Maybe he was making more money because he was working hourly or whatever. But it was like, where is my truck? It's gone. It's not at the dealer. It's been gone a half hour. I actually tried to get in my Mustang and drive and find it. And by then the guy was gone. Anyway, whatever. Silly story. But uh, they picked it up. They brought it back. Everything was fine. Didn't have any issues with it. Nothing has fallen apart. Nothing is loose. They snapped everything back in like it's supposed to go. I've had a couple other recalls. I think there's a current recall open on the uh, rear view camera, which I think that can lock on or whatever, or stay on too long, or I don't remember what the issue is with it. They currently don't have the parts to replace it. And that's like not a drivability issue. I really don't care. I don't know. I'll probably be pretty lazy about it. Getting that one done at some point, I guess I will, whatever. I've done all the other ones. I think one of them was just putting a sticker in the engine compartment or something. I don't know. Anyway, but uh, you know, all these recalls, I've never had any issues, of course, related to them. Have I had any problems with the Maverick? I really haven't. Uh, like I said, I'm uh, approaching 31K, 30,773 miles. Uh, I used to title my video, this, with the exact mileage of the Maverick, I found that people weren't that interested in the exact mileage of my Maverick. I think they like uh, nice round numbers, so we are just gonna call it the 30K update for this video. And yeah, no real issues. Uh, I have some squeaky brakes that I've had really since the beginning, only when it's wet and I'm in reverse. The brakes seem to work fine. I don't know, maybe they need to be cleaned or the rotors uh, you know, need to be treated or, something but uh i just haven't bothered because other than the squeak you know they seem to function perfectly well the one issue i've had since the beginning if i have the auto uh brake feature on so you can take your foot off the pedal at the stoplights that works fine but then it does other weird things like if i go into reverse it seems like the brakes clamp down and the truck will not continue forward unless i release that button or whatever so i tend to just push that button only when i'm at a stoplight and then you know i just take it off i don't leave it on with that auto uh brake feature which i do enjoy you know it's at the point now where like i feel like fatigued if i'm holding the brake for too long which is silly and you know my mustang obviously does not have an auto brake feature and for whatever reason it doesn't bother me in that car but when i'm in this truck it's like oh i gotta put my foot on the brake for a long time forget it when i get just push a button and you know the brakes will stand for as long as I want so uh, other than it's just a weird I think quirk of the going back to quirks quirk of the system that when you leave that auto brake feature on sometimes the brakes clamp down and do things you don't necessarily want them to do um, beyond that uh, I've had some issues with my own driving I backed into something and I had a bang out the corner of the car I did it by myself I got some spray paint I sprayed over it does not look great but it's not particularly noticeable unless you know something has happened in that area it's a little bumpy wavy whatever but it was right under the taillight I was able to take some little craft hammers and pop the dent the ding out again and uh, I have well it looks basically like the surface of the moon I have craters in my hood now I parked this vehicle outside and we have these acorns that fall from the trees. The hood is aluminum, it dents very easily. And I have, I don't even wanna know how many, 30, 40 dents in my hood now. It's a real drag. I really like to keep my cars in good shape and normally I do and I keep them, you know, dent and ding free to the best of my ability. And uh, it's just unfortunately parking outside with this vehicle. Uh, I've had multiple incidents where branches have fallen very close to the vehicle. Matter of fact, I was out once and a giant branch fell right in the spot where I normally park the truck. I just didn't happen to be home that day. So either the truck is lucky or I don't know what, but uh, it's managed to avoid those major incidents that have happened. But I do have all these little annoying dings, dents, everything else. I don't really uh, keep it clean at this point. I leave it parked outside. It looks pretty good as a silver vehicle. It doesn't really look too dirty, but uh, you know, I really have not looked after it uh, as far as the cosmetics like I should, but um, you know, it seems to be wearing just fine. Otherwise there are little scratches and things in the interior and people complain about that with the plastic. I have my dog in here often and he scratches up stuff. And yeah, there are lots of scratches on the, uh, 
the glove uh, box door, maybe from just passengers or whatever, scraping against it, who knows. But, uh, so there are those things, again, they just tend not to bother me because this is in fact a truck and, you know, it's used for practical purpose. It's used, it is my main vehicle, but it's used, you know, to transport equipment and that kind of thing. So uh, I don't want to drag on forever in this video, and you've probably given up a long time ago, so I can pretty much say anything at this point. But uh, if you've stuck with it, <clears throat> thank you. To summarize, very happy with the Maverick purchase. I had to spend a little more than I wanted, but you know, it was still a $28,000 truck or whatever. I know the prices have come up quite a bit since then, and they're hard to find in the 20s, and uh, <clears throat> it is still a fun, responsive, fast vehicle. I am very happy with the EcoBoost engine, and it really zips around. It is very car-like when you drive it. You don't feel necessarily like you're driving a truck. It's not huge. It's not hard to park. And uh, the handling and everything have been great. Still, of course, on the original brakes, tires. I haven't done any of that stuff. I've changed out just air filters, cabin filters, sim simple maintenance items. Uh, I don't even think I've done the wipers yet. Probably do for that. But uh, yeah, overall, I still, after three years almost, 30,000 miles, have nothing but great things to say about the Maverick. Very happy about it. I have no plans to replace it, do anything with it other than to continue to drive it. And uh, hopefully we'll do the 40, the 50K update, and I'll have pretty much the same report for you. All right, signing off for now. Thank you for tuning in to my channel and all my many Maverick videos. If you haven't seen them, I've done some where I've talked about the mods I've done to the Maverick and done lots of other updates uh, over the years at different uh, mileage levels. I did a bunch of videos when I first bought the vehicle and just talked about the features and the operation of the vehicle and the different uh, screens and things that, uh, you know, you can change uh, settings, different things like that, how you deal with the uh, fact that you really can't put it into neutral with the powers off. I've talked about that. I've talked about the gear shift knob and all the crazy stuff you can do, like you can throw it in reverse when you're driving, and it, of course it will not go in reverse. Hopefully so. It didn't for me, and I made a video about that too, but uh, anyway, so I've driven into some neighborhood. I don't even know where I am at this point, and uh, that's it for me. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you later.